Welcome back, movie trivia schmodown fans. It is the ultimate schmodown, still round number one of the singles tournament. I'm Christian Harloff here, joined as always by Mark Baby Carrots at least. How you doing, buddy? Uh, that's not my last name pronunciation, Christian. Oh. I feel great. I've never had a microphone closer to my face. I've never felt more heard or seen in my life. And I'll tell you this, Christian, neither have these two competitors that we are about to watch because one of them knows they have the stuff to go all the way in this tournament. The other one, I'd say from everybody's speculation, and then the first time we actually saw her compete certainly has the goods to take it, if not all the way to the championship of this tournament, a long way, possibly a Final Four berth. This is a very interesting match all the way around when you look at all of the components uh, that go into it. We, first of all, let's talk about the factions in general. You have Swag, who, I mean, look at the run that they've been having. They have the Inner Geekdom champion. They have the Star Wars tournament winner and number one contender. They are doing great in teams. I mean, Winston Marshall, what he has done with this faction, it's, it's, it's legendary. I mean, he has really done some great stuff with this faction thus far. But you can't take away from the Queen of Corruption. You cannot forget because Winston has had the spotlight on him and he's been making moves since the beginning of the season and he's been doing great. Shannon was in the it was in the cellar. Shannon was in last place. And then Shannon, not only did she win the Inner Geekdom tournament, both of her guys, Kalinowski and Ellison, were in the finals of it. I don't think enough people are talking about that. And you look at what she did with Adam Collins, and then she dra she drafts and brings in Marisol McKee, who wins her first match. Uh, the, Shannon has uh, her and Winston and Bobby Gucci not only battling for manager of the year, constantly just trading up who's going to be in first place who's going to keep it so that alone is enough of the drama and we're not even talking about the competitors no it, it's been fun for the fans and us announcers alike to watch the matriculation of team swag with winston marshall it not he's not taking people that we've necessarily heard all that much about in the schmodown before it, we, certainly we know some of the characters but to see them reach new heights under his stewardship is something that's pretty incredible to look at. And then on the other side of the ledger, when you look at corruption and Shannon Barney Christian, you mentioned Chance and Mike going at it in the Inner Geekdom final. But now we get to see what does Shannon do with someone who is newer to the league, who isn't used to all the rigmarole, who is finding their footing in this. Can Shannon work with a newbie as well as Winston has? We might find out the answer to that right now. Yeah, because then when you look at what both, I mean, obviously, Paul Oyama, and I've been pretty vocal about this in general, like his change in attitude has been one of the best things that he's ever done. He didn't take, I mean, let's not take away what he did last season. He won six straight matches or seven, including teams. He won the movie trivia showdown singles championship, and he didn't just beat uh, nobody to do it. He beat Dan Murley, defended the championship, one of very few champions to do that. He had a tremendous season. People always look at what happened with him and Ben Bateman, but it was that Ben Bateman loss and the conversations going around between the players of, ah, he doesn't respect it. He doesn't do this. It, it, it changed him. I spoke to him in the hallway of spectacular and he was shook and he said, I got to change something. I've got to do something. And he did it because not only did he join with Winston Marshall, he changed his whole thing. I've never seen a player that was when you, you and I, when we called that match, in New York, him and Snyder. I've never seen a player get booed out of the building the way that they booed Oyama. But on the same thing, I've never seen such a switch. They love this kid now, and they love what he's doing, and they love his attitude. Now you you go to the opposite side of that. Now you have this rookie hotshot here, Lady Justice, who is saying she doesn't believe Oyama. She believes it's an act. She doesn't. She's she's gonna she's gonna expose it. She's gonna expose it. That's what corruption does. They expose it. She thinks that this is a this is a farce of what uh, Paul Oyama is doing. She is confident, and she played against Bonnie Somerville. Mark, like I mean, and Bonnie had a good game. It was Bonnie's best game. But Lady Justice played that game like someone who's been playing this game for years, not someone who just had their first match. Well, that's right. I mean, she, she literally beat Bonnie at least part of the match blindfolded. And as far as Oyama goes, I think what you're going to find here, Christian, is that character tends to reveal itself in defeat. And so if Marisol is able to, and I would call it a mild upset of Big Paul up. Oyama, if nothing yeah. else today, I think we're going to find out who the real Oyama is. But you go back to that scenario in New York where he's just hearing a rain of boos as he's winning. And I think that even in the fans booing him, there is a respect factor there. There's a fear factor, if you will, not to go eat some disgusting food, but to think this is a guy to be respected. And now that the fans can not only respect his ability, but also get on his side and cheer him on, I think that's really been a boon to his success this year. 
All right, Mark, before we get the managers in here, let us find out exactly how we got where we are right now. Hot. Damn, it's a good day for a schmodown. Yes, one thing to say to you. Justice has been served. Marisol is the one that I think captured our hearts because she went in there with a presence that I, I have never seen from a rookie. For a rookie to come in here, cool, calm, and collected the whole time. She is a serious threat not to be taken lightly. If your next person is a former champ, that's yes. your first real test. Yeah. So, uh, Lady Justice. I see corruption's taking the whole blind leading the blind thing literally, which is an interesting choice for them. First of all, Your Honor, this young lady claims that justice is blind. Well, if this young lady is blind, how is it that she's watching movies? And of course, I'm going to be taking her incredibly seriously, but the thing is, she needs to take me seriously, too. Primetime Paul Oyama, he is back, and he's back with a very different attitude. There's no more of these sunglasses, no more of the jacket. I don't really care how much of an attitude adjustment he's had. When he steps into that ring, it's just me and him. I just hope this nice guy routine hasn't softened his edge. She claims that she is justice, yet I have it here. Section 5, Article 3 of the Constitution that justice shall not be corrupt. Do y'all remember the good old days when Paul Oyama was the dominant threat in the singles league? <laughs> Of course, Winston had to go off and encourage him to come back to the singles tournament to redeem himself after the embarrassment that he was. I'm on a two-game slide in singles, and the buck stops here. This is where my run back to the singles glory starts. I'm just going to have to take the win today. The lady is hungry. You better believe I've been training for somebody like him. It's not his weaknesses that would lose a match for him against me. It's going to be my strengths. Hold on to your butt, Suryama. Because you're about to be on track. Well, yeah, and we mentioned Winston Marshall, obviously being able to work with him, the difference between him working with Kaiser last year and Winston. He has not won a singles match with Winston yet, albeit he's won, he's won a lot of uh, teams matches under Winston's reign, but he hasn't won a singles match yet. Only had one, and that was against Roca, uh, but this is the first one. And speaking of Winston Marshall from Swag, going to bring in Winston right now and one of his bitter rivals for this season, the queen of corruption herself. It seems like we just can't split you guys up. No matter how much we try, you just seem to be playing against each other and battling here. Uh, Winston, go ahead. You got something? I was just saying, stop following me. God, like why Why is it everywhere I go, you're just there? You ain't got nothing else to do with your life. You ain't got nothing else working for you. You just gonna show up everywhere I go. That's just what this is. It's because we're just as good as you. Get used to seeing us here, Winston, because we're not going anywhere. Fair yeah, enough. That's, that's fair. That's mm -hmm. Mark, go ahead. I, I can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. Winston, I'll start with you, but then I also want to get Shannon's thoughts on this. It's so new in a tournament, and y'all have seen fairly recently each other in not just this, but many other different format competitions. So it's three rounds. It's the movie Trish mode on any movie. It could possibly have a question asked about it. So how is the preparation different for a tournament like this? Winston, start with you. I mean, I'm going to say right now, if Paul doesn't get all questions about Black Dynamite, which I made him watch 30 times, we're in trouble. I mean, there's that. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's it's we've already been in the mode of playing. So now the bigger focus is to just, you know, you, you brush up on stuff you like, stuff you don't like, and then you focus on the things that you think might bring you some issues. That's essentially what you do, because it is much broader than IG or Star Wars, where it's like, I know it's this in this finite number of movies. This is hurting. So, but we, we're ready for it. I mean, we have vets like Paul, a former champion. We have a vet like Lon, like, even though he's out of his gourd. I mean, we have people that have done this before, so we know how to prepare for stuff like this. Shannon, I have confirmation on the wheel that Black Dynamite is not a slice, at least not in round two. Oh! 
Oh, shoot, because we prepped for that, too. We were so ready for Stop that. Stop following me! <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. All right, well. Crap. So what do you what do you, what do you want to know? You want to know how we're how we're training for this differently than IG? Yeah, but let me let me couple that up though also with this because we do want to get the competitors in in here. You know, with and I mentioned this as we were coming in here. Marisol McKee had in her first performance against Bonnie, she didn't seem like she broke a sweat. She didn't seem like she was nervous. She didn't see she seemed like she knew the game. She, there there were people and I can reference Lon Harris as one of those people who are still making the mistakes in this game after being in it for seasons. Harris and McKee seems like she's been playing this for eight seasons. Uh, how how can you explain that? Why well, you got to bring that up, Christian? Well, she's right. under my leadership, so she's not going to worry or get flustered or let anyone rob her of her integrity in the way she plays the game. I told her from the start, all I wanted her to do was play like a vet. She took that advice and she ran with it and look what happened with her. She was phenomenal in that match. And that was against Bonnie's like best effort ever. I mean, holy crap. People are still gonna be talking about that. Um, but Marisol's stone cold, man. And, and she's prepared and she's ready. She loves this stuff. She loves this stuff. And again, I'm cool. I'm ready for anything. I'm not gonna let anyone hold us down. So why should she? She has no reason to worry. She has no reason to break a sweat and get nervous. It's a game. It's a game. You're either gonna win it or you're gonna lose it. And I think that that, I'll, I'll give you credit to that, Shannon. I mean, there's a reason that you're up here. Uh, and this is something that we prepared for ourselves. You guys didn't know who Ace was. I mean, you had heard of him, but you didn't know who Ace was. And that was a rookie, a quote unquote rookie that came in and took the whole league by storm. Y'all didn't really know who the Barbarian was. Look what the Barbarian has been doing and stuff like that. So to ever doubt somebody you haven't heard of is a huge mistake. So we're coming at Mary Soul with everything. So I hope you really did train her for this. Oh, yeah. Like I said from the very beginning, we are hoping for uh, Spectacular Oyama, but we're training for Singles Champ Oyama. And uh, we've done all we could do. And you know I love playing with you, Winston. I don't hate you the way I hate Kaiser. But this Fair. is going to be a great match. I'm excited. I'm excited to beat you. All right, well, there you go, everybody. So, And we also know these two are, are far from over from uh, facing each other. Never over, we, we, know, we know the spectacular already. So, all right, guys, so we're going to drop you out here, both Winston and Shannon. Mark, you know, not as not as heated or angry as we've seen both of them before with other managers, as as Shannon said, but it's I think that they have a mutual respect for one another, what they've done so far. But well, yeah, and a mutual hatred for Kaiser. Yes. I mean, anytime Wake and Duke people hang out, we can at least bond over our mutual hatred in North Carolina. So I think that that's what, if you say we hate this guy the most, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I'm not going to call them friends, but at least there's a begrudging respect. Right. And I do. And I, and I forgot to ask Shannon about it, but I still, I, even though they, they have been going after Paul Yam, and I wonder if that was under her guidance, but we're going to find out in just a little bit here. Are you ready? Ooh, we are prepped, ready to go. New setup, louder voice. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first, representing corruption with a record of one win, no defeats. She is Lady Justice Marisol McKean. Marisol McKean, Lady Justice, she is here. Marisol, I have to ask you first and foremost because I forgot about to ask Shannon. Um, I know that you had played in the fan leagues. Uh, Paul Oyama, a legend in the fan leagues. You said that you believe more of his real personality and respected his game more last season than this season. Why is that? Yeah, you know, it comes down to a simple thing. I know what somebody will do when their back's against the wall in terms of their character being attacked. Um, and I'm sure the fans can be easily swayed by a wholesome character makeover, but I'm Lady Justice. And Justice is blind. Uh, she sees through all, and she's going to see right through that kind of act. So wow. I'm all not right. buying it. I, apparently not. You're sticking to it, looking to expose it, as, as staying true to what you said there on social media. Mark, uh, something for Lady Yeah, Justice. I mean, 
Absolutely. Uh, Marisol, first of all, is a kid who really didn't learn how to tie shoes until he was 12. It's inspiring to watch how easily you untie that blindfold. Uh, you seem to be somebody new at the game, so you would imagine you're as, as nervous and as squirrely and as sweaty as I get in front of the mic, but you seem as cool, calm, collected as that creature over there. So how are you able to handle all this pressure, all this hype, all these people talking about is Marisol going to be able to advance versus this known quantity? How do you remain so calm? Um, I remain calm, honestly, by not internalizing any of it. I mean, this is fate at its finest here, and only what can happen should happen. You know, I'm not going to bring in any riffraff, any outside into there. I, I, like Shannon said, I just focus on what I love and what I believe in. And, you know, that, that gets me through all, and that's going to get me through today. All right, well, Marisol, we're going to put you in the waiting room here as we wait for primetime Paul Oyama. Good luck to you. Thanks. All right, so we have Lady Justice, and now her opponent. And her opponent, representing Swag, with a record of six wins, two defeats, and one knockout. He is the former... Movie Trivia Schmodown Champion of the World Prime Time Paul Oyama Paul Oyama Prime Time All right, Prime Time, like I said, and I've been talking about it, your attitude has changed tremendously. Um, I see it, the fans have seen it, your fellow competitors have seen it, except one of them, Lady Justice doesn't buy it, thinks it's an act, respects your game, but said, you know, she wants to expose it. Any words for Lady Justice going into this match here today? Uh, no, just good luck to her. I mean, you know, we're both coming into this kind of fresh. Honestly, she's had more success than I have had in this tournament. She's 1-0. I haven't played a match. All that other stuff kind of doesn't matter. All that happens, that matters is what happens in the ring here. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll find out, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll just do my thing. Yeah, Christian, humble, not cocky at all. And as a guy who's gotten to know Paul a little bit, we broke bread at a Red Roof Inn in Meadowlands, New Jersey last year. Paul, I just want to ask, maybe one of the credibility strains you can lend to your transformation is your team partner with the delinquent. Maybe looking at him and how he's gone down the wrong path, has that in any way, or shape, or form steered you into the right side of things? Yeah, I think the easiest way to learn how to do something is to see how not to do it. Uh, and, uh, you know, Lon's been great as a teammate, but that is not how I want to approach life personally. We work well together, but that's not something I ever want to become. Um, so seeing that has sort of inspired me to be more of my true self and to sort of realize that this is a game that I love and I should enjoy playing it. It shouldn't be so self-serious. Obviously, I take the game incredibly seriously, but this is fun. It's movie trivia. We're supposed to enjoy it. That's kind of the point. And if you're not having fun, what are you doing? All right, Paul. So after that mantra, I'm sure that your manager, very, very happy. But we are going to remove you here for just a moment. Bring back Lady Justice. And there is primetime Paul Oyama. All right, Mark, our competitors have entered the virtual battlefield round number one. How's that go? Ah, let's see if we got any rules left in the stock room. We do. They're for round number one. This round will have eight questions asked to the field from eight different corners of movie trivia, schmodown, and know-how. Your first question, your last question, and every question therein are each worth one point apiece. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing, at least not in round number one. Our mind each competitor that you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Use whatever utensil you have handy on whatever writing surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please reveal your answer to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone. You each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the three round match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you wanna buy yourself another 15 seconds, Use one of those jete rules. You also each have one challenge that you can use. You may initiate the challenge, but your manager will then come into the stream and ultimately confirm and ratify the decision before we move forward with it. Christian, they know how the game is played. They were fans. They watched it. They said, I can do that better than anyone else. And they kind of have. So what do you say we get started? All right. So we asked Primetime, are you ready? Set your clocks. Let's do this. Marisol, are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Then let's get ready to schmodown. All right, question number one category. Number one, action adventure. 
name either the male or female lead of the 2015 action comedy American Ultra. That's a uh, that's a movie. Yeah, have you not seen that one? No, have you? Yeah, I saw it. You did not. I swear I did. <laughs> What's it about? Oh, well, I'm not going to say that. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down. And we start with uh, Paul. Jesse Eisenberg. That's correct. Marisol? Jesse Eisenberg. Got it. Okay. Uh, all right. Next question there, Mark. Beats me. All right. Your next category is in the world of directors. And that question is, who directed Jack Black in 2003's School of Rock? The year was 2003. Mark broke up. Did I? I A little bit. I heard it. Fine. I promised I wouldn't do that again. Yeah, it was 2003. First movie I saw when I moved to L.A., in case anybody cares. Uh, nope. uh, Swing five, five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Marisol. Pens down. And we start with Marisol. Um, Richard Linklater. That's correct. And Paul. Texas Rick, Richard Linklater. Two, two. Two, two. Got to make sure just uh, we got to have those pens down right after zero just to let everybody know. All right. Yeah. Make sure hands up for managers, too. And now we get to question number eight. There was a, there's an animal in the back of somebody's. Uh, wasn't wasn't mine. Wasn't mine. All right. Dramas. Name this best picture winning film. A Civil War soldier develops a relationship with a band of Lakota Indians and adapts their lifestyle. Christian, it's amazing how fast Marisol writes, but also keeps how that wonderful. perfect handwriting. Yeah, I was shocked. Five. All caps. Four, three, two, caps lock. one. Pens down, please. And starting with uh, Paul. The 10 hour long Dances with Wolves. Yes. And Marisol. I like saying it with my chest. Dances with Wolves. Yes. Your handwriting is impeccable. Really uh, good. Yeah. So now, well, I guess, you know, when you're a lady of the court, here is the next question crime oops mark that's you you ask it great handoff as always partner it's like we've been doing this for three weeks now your question anthony hopkins reprised his role as hannibal Lecter in what 2002 film there's scrap here scrap. yeah and, and again the sound effects we need to punch, like the pipe court. in the squeaky sound effects Even five it... four three Two, one, pens down, pens down, and Marisol. Hannibal. It's incorrect. Paul? Red Dragon. Yes, Paul strikes first blood. Four, three, four, three, as we get to our next question here. Next question. Fantasy sci-fi. Who plays the lead role as a mercenary named Royce in 2010's Predators? Did uh did you say Paul drank first blood? No, I said Oh, I, I thought you were referencing Hannibal Lecter and I was like, well oh, done. Yeah. yeah, maybe I did say that. Uh, Don't take it back. <laughs> no. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Paul. Adrian Brody. Yes, Marisol. Adrian Brody. Correct. So Marisol only missing that one thus far. One point behind Oyama, who has a 5-4 lead here. Mark, as we get to question number six. And Predators is a great movie. Your next category is in the world of comedies. Hit it, Molly. All right. Which Oscar-winning actress plays a talk show host opposite Mindy Kaling in 2019's Late Night? Love Another this movie one. I wasn't really sure existed. This is... I Maybe it. I need to watch more movies. I saw this one too. Is it good? Five. Lano. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down, please. And Marisol. Emma Thompson. Yes. And uh, Paul. Be delightful. Emma Thompson. Yes. All right. So Paul Oyama. Six five. As we get to question seven, Paul has not missed yet. And here it goes. Horror slash thriller. John Cusack plays Mike Enslin, an author stuck in a ha haunted hotel room in what 2007 horror film? Mm, not a good place to be. Been in many hotel rooms, Christian. I think some of them were haunted. Uh, I would probably say that's true. Yeah. And 
five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. Paul. 1408. Yes. Marisol. 1408. That is correct. Seven to six as our final question in this round. If Paul Oyama gets it, he's got himself a perfect round. If not, we move on over to round number two. What is it? All right. The categories animated movies could be drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question for one point. Brian Cranston voices the character of Lee Shan alongside Jack Black's Poe in what 2016 film? Good query here to close us out. Pretty good. Paul's playing really well right now. But very smooth from both these competitors. Very relaxed. Five, relaxed. four, three, two, one. Pens down. Marisol? Kung Fu Panda 3. Yes, and Paul for a perfect round. Kung Fu Panda 3. Perfect round for Paul Oyama. So Paul Oyama hits a perfect round. So Marisol McKee having a hell of a first round as well. Only missing one. Finds herself a seven points. But Paul, you have one question here that is for you and only you. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Here it is. Stuart Gordon directed Jeffrey Combs in what 1985 horror film based on an H.P. Lovecraft story? Reanimator? Yes, sir. One point. So Paul Oyama doing it well, looking like he did back in 2019 as we see ourselves 9-7. But a great first round for both competitors. And Mark, round number two, it's about to begin. How's it go? It's about to spin because it is the wheel round. We're not bringing a wheel to your homes. I don't even know where y'all live. So we're just going to have a virtual wheel. And once we settle on a category, you're going to be asked four questions from that realm of movie trivia, schmodown, know-how. Each question is worth two points. There is no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing, it's available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. We promise. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one. So Christian, like you said, very impressive turn for Marisol there in round number one. However, it's Paul Oyama who currently has a perfect game going. He even got the bonus question. Reanimator is the answer. So Paul is going to deliberate with his manager, Winston Marshall, for 60 seconds over whether he'd like to spin first or defer to his justice opponent. All right, we're going to remove Marisol and Shannon here. And Winston, you got 60 seconds starting now. Hey, dude, you you broke your first round curse. Yeah, never had it in singles. Never had it in singles before. There you go, man. Uh, How you feeling so far? I feel good. It's going well. She's, I mean, she's having a great game. She's a really good player, so I expected that. I do have a question for real quick since we got a little extra time. Girl, how you going to be blind and you can see? Because either you've been singing Amazing Grace or your name is Matt Murdock or you got some explaining to do. I she don't got know. magic. She got magic. I'm saying, though. But all right. So I'm assuming we're we going to do what we normally do? Yeah. We know right. what we got to do. Uh, we're going to go second, Christian. You're going to go second. All right. So yes, we're gonna, all right. Thank you, Paul. We're going to put Paul in the waiting room here. Thank you, Winston. Uh, and now we bring back Shannon and Lady Justice. 60 seconds here, Shannon, to talk to your competitors starting now. No surprise they're going uh, first here, Marisol. You did amazing. Um, Whatever they're talking about, perfect first round, blah, blah, blah. Erase those words from your head because a perfect first round does not determine the game. Not in singles and not in teams, okay? So great, he got his first perfect first round. It's amazing it took him that long to get there. But it's our turn now, okay? You don't need a perfect first round. You're gonna be just fine. So we get to spin this wheel and we get the pick of the litter. So let's see what happens. You're fantastic. You stay focused, you stay locked in. You've got all of your repeats. Use your multiple choice if you need them. You, I mean, you're set, you're set. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm shake good. it off. Um, yeah, it was one question, shake it off, we move forward. And my first, the first thing I wrote down was the right answer. And there you go. So then here you go. So for round two, what I tell you every single time I see you, just trust your gut. Ten Whatever seconds. you write down, unless you know, unless you know for certain it's wrong, you mm-hmm. trust your gut and you go with your instinct because your instinct is going to be right nine times out of 10, 10 out of 10. Let's spin this wheel and see what we get. Got okay, it. time's up there. Here's the wheel. And the spin is in. Let's go. Let's get a good spin, baby. Yeah, that's the thing. We don't know here, Mark, what Marisol is, uh, her strength or weakness. Is it something very, uh, or an advantage I think she might have? No, I, I hope it's Eddie Murphy. Oh, Nora Nora Efron. Efron. 60 seconds for Nora Ephron to discuss starting now. Okay. Hmm. We talked about this. How are you feeling? Hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, I think that I can take a stab at Nora Ephron. I support that decision. 
Okay. All right. So we're so yeah. we're we're going with no Efron here, Marisol. Um. Still have thirty seconds here. Hmm. What do you think, Shannon? <laughs> what do you think? I I I because I can go either way with this. Well, you don't want to spin worse. Twenty seconds. You can right. handle this. You can handle this. Okay. I think right. I think I think you stick with it. Okay, I think so. I think so too. That's where I'm leaning. Let's let's yeah. Trust let's like you said, it. trust your gut. Let's do it. Let's thank go you. for it. Okay. All right. So Nora oh, Efron, it is. All right. Thank you, Shannon. I'm gonna put you in the waiting room here. Bring back Paul Oyama. Marisol, you're gonna get four questions in the realm of Nora Efron films. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, here you go. Here's question number one. All right. When Harry Met Sally predominantly takes place in what city? Um, let's go with multiple choice. Is, is it A, San Francisco, B, Chicago, C, Washington, D.C., D, New York City? D, New York City. Correct for one point. All right. Question two. Who plays Frank Navasky, a newspaper writer for the New York Observer in You've Got Mail? Five, four, three. I'll take multiple chase for this. Is it A, Greg Kinnear, B, Steve Zahn, C, Bill Pullman, D, Billy Crystal? Um, that is Greg Kinnear. That is correct for one more point. Here's question number three. We're tied. Adam Sandler plays the character of Louis Capshaw in which Nora Ephron film? Five, four, three. I'll take multiple chase for this, please. Is it A, Bewitched, B, Lucky Numbers, C, Mixed Nuts, D, Michael? Hmm. Five, four, three, two. Mixed Nuts. That's correct for two points. And finally, your final question here, final question. Which actress from TV's Friends co-stars with John Travolta in Lucky Numbers? That would be Lisa Kudrow. For two more points, Marisol McKee winds up fighting doesn't miss anything, has to go to multiple choice twice, but finds herself here up by three, 12, nine, as we get to round, uh, excuse me, prime times round. All right, so Marisol gonna drop you out, bring back Winston. So just correcting the score here, 12, nine, 12, nine, Marisol McKee went to multiple choice three times and landed one without the multiple as we get to Paul Oyama. All right, so you now have uh, 60 seconds here to talk to Paul. Uh, hey man, I mean that's that I'm I'm impressed. I mean for for a person we haven't seen before, I'm impressed. But I'm not worried about her. I'm looking at you, my guy, and this is what you were built for. So she did good. It's, it's just it's our turn. It's exactly. Okay. So let's go get it, baby. Let's go get it. All right, here's the wheel. Paul Oyama looking to build a build on. Sorry, take the lead again, and here it is. All right, round and round it goes. I see Meryl on there, Christian. And we find ourselves now, Mark, on Nora Ephron. There will be a free spin. Oh. Free spin. Here it is. Nora Ephron getting a lot of love here. Love. I, was just, I was just hoping that we would get the same question. That would have been fun. That would have been good. It Ooh. is. Hey. Spinner's hey, choice. Buddy. What are All you feeling? Right. So what do you got here? Spinner's choice. Uh, we're going to go with uh, Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. All right. So we're going to drop out Winston. And we are going to bring back Marisol. All right. So, Paul Oyama, four questions in the realm of Stanley Kubrick, Mark. Once again, the great Eddie Murphy denied unfairly. But I will be fair to Paul and ask questions about Stanley Kubrick. Here we go, Paul. 
four questions in the world of the fine auteur who may or may not have engineered the moon landing. Your question. In Full Metal Jacket, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman finds what type of contraband food in Gomer Pyle's locker that causes Hartman to punish the platoon for all future mistakes? A jelly donut. It is in fact a donut and it is jelly. That is correct for two. Your next question, Paul. Who plays the title character in Barry Lyndon? Mr. Ryan O'Neill. He is a Mr. He is Ryan, and he is somewhat Irish. So Paul Oyama Christian now has the lead once again over Marisol McKee with two questions left in Stanley Kubrick. Paul, your penultimate question in the world of auteur Kubrick. In The Shining, the photograph in the hotel hallway at the film's end shows Jack now standing amid a crowd of party revelers. What year does the picture say it is? 1921. And what a year it was. The Roaring Twenties and Christian Paulo Yama roars his way into a much bigger lead and he can add to it by two more going into round number three if he can get this last question in the world of Stanley Kubrick. Paul, how many roles does Peter Sellers play in Dr. Strangelove? He plays them all brilliantly and it's three. Christian Paul Oyama just cleared the Kubrick deck eight points in all. I got to tell you, that was a very impressive round. Uh, all right, so let's now bring back the managers here as Paul Oyama has not missed a single question thus far, even with Marisol McKee playing a very, very good game here. Oyama up by five going into round number three. All right, next uh, next question. Sorry, next round. Here it is. The rule. Another question, if you got. I, mean, if you got I was. No, okay. I uh, I haven't had to answer a trivia question in like nine years, and I only intend on going back. <laughs> I much prefer to read the rules of round number three, and here they are. Round number three. This is the round that will determine the match, lest we go to sudden death overtime. We're prepared. In round number three, we need a series of numbers from each competitor. We need three numbers from each of you. These numbers can range from one to 20. You may not pick the same numbers as your opponent. Why do we need individual numbers? Because they correspond to a unique category in the world of the Schmodown. Your first question is worth two points. Next one's worth three points. Your final one, should we make it that far, is worth five big points. And Paul Oyama, because he enjoys the lead, is going to have the privilege of giving us his three lucky numbers first. So, Paul, from 1 to 20, what feels most fortunate? Uh, let's go 4, 7, and 15. 4, 7, and 15 for Primetime and Marisol. Let's go with 8, 9, and 10. 8, 9, 10 for Marisol. All right. So, Paul will be going second. So, Winston, 60 seconds to talk to Paul starting now. Dude, you a bad man. Woo! I know none of that. And you know I've been helping the whole squad study. I was like, bruh. Also, spoiler alert, y'all just going to ruin the shining for me? Like, come on. Like, it's on my list of things to watch. I just, it's fine. Thing is, got all your JTs. You got the challenge. Take a deep breath. Do what you do best, man. Um, I'm expecting to answer questions here, and I'll be ready to answer when they come think, my way. I know she's going to do great in round three. I Good honestly, best. I honestly believe that you're going to have to answer a question or two here. So just keep your cool. Maybe three. Maybe, three. Ready. Maybe all three. Who knows, baby? So just keep your cool, and let's make it happen. Yeah, we got. It. All right, thank you, Winston. Shannon, 60 seconds to talk to Marisol starting now. All right, Marisol, shake it off. Round two's done. We still got one more round to go. It ain't over yet, so take a breath. You got your JTEs, you got your challenge. How are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling, you know, not ideal to play from behind, but let's see what happens. I'm I'm not, I'm not, you know, thrown off. Let's just mm -hmm. answer some questions. And let's just let's, let's do what you love to do. Let's finish this out, girl. Okay. Win or lose, yeah. you finish strong, all right? All right, got it, queen. Let's all do right. it. All right, so thank you to both Winston and Shannon. I'm going to remove you guys. All right, so in order to avoid the TKO, Marisol is going to try to answer some questions here. And we start, Marisol, you chose category number eight. Category number eight, and that is in the realm of new releases. That can be anywhere from the last 12 to 18 months. All right, for new releases, who plays the main lead, Roy McBride, in the sci-fi film Ad Astra? That would be Brad Pitt. Two points. Marisol McKee is now looking. In order to tie the game, she needs to hit her three-pointer. She needs to hit her three-pointer 
And Marisol, you chose category nine. That is in the realm of the 2010s, anywhere from 2010 to 2019. Here is your question. Adam Sandler plays a plastic surgeon that goes on a trip to Hawaii in what 2010s film? Just go with it. That's correct. For three points, Marisol McKee ties up the game here. 17-17. Corruption avoids the TKO. And now Paul Oyama has to answer his two-point question there, Mark. That's right, Christian. And it corresponds to a wacky category to retake the lead. I don't know if Stanley Kubrick ever directed any of these movies, but Paul, your category is dance films. Films featuring the art of dance. And your question, once again, for two points and to reclaim solo possession of the lead, Adrian Lynn directed Jennifer Beals in what 1983 film? Flash Dance. We're all going to not live forever, but maybe till the end of this tournament, if he keeps answering those kind of questions, Christian, back to you. All right, we jump back to Marisol McKee. Now, Mar Marisol has her last question here. It is question number 10. It's the five-pointer. If she hits it, Paul's going to be forced to answer both of his questions here as we get to this final question. Marisol, you chose category 10. Category 10, that is in the realm of action-adventure. Action-adventure. And here it is. Action Adventure, five points. Are you ready? Yes, I am. All right, here you go. In 2012's Dread, what is the name of the addictive new drug which alters users' perception of time? Five, four, three, two. JTE, please. First one. In 2012's Dread, what is the name of the addictive new drug which alters users' perception of time? Five, four, three, to JTE. Second one. In 2012's Dread, what is the name of the addictive new drug which alters users' perception of time? Five. Shine. And your winner, advancing to the next round, primetime Paul Oyama. The answer was slow-mo, slow-mo, slow-mo. All right, Marisol, thank you so much. Hell of a match there played by Lady Justice in the waiting room here as we bring back Swag's own Winston. Dude, this has to be a big one here because now you've knocked down corruption to only two competitors. This is really a massive, massive uh, win here. And three more points for Swag. How you feeling? I mean, how you feeling about Paul's uh, performance? I mean, it, it, it was only a matter of time. I know we had a little bit of uh, stumbling out of the gate and that he played two phenomenal matches. Uh, solo, he played uh, John Roca, and Roca was pulling things out of nowhere. And he played Chance and IG, and, and Chance went on to win the whole tournament. So I know Paul's been itching to prove to everybody that he's still got his own sauce, and he proved it today. And I got to give credit, honestly, to Marisol. Uh, she played an incredible game, honestly. That was that was very, very solid of a game, and and... I, I see why uh, Shannon put her in the tournament in the first place. So, you know, hats off to you for this. Uh, but this this is prime time. That's that's all I'll say. And I'm, I'm very proud of Paul. Uh, yeah, Winston, you once again made your bed for this match. So we knew it was a big one. And <laughs> Paul, when we look at your gameplay today, you didn't really show any of the inner demons that maybe we saw from you last season but i know you got a little bit of nasty in you so do you employ that still in your being your true nice guy self is there any motivation from within that gets a little heated that gets a little uh evil shall i say 
Uh, I think evil might be stretching it. There's always a fire under my belly. There always will be. I have such a passion and, and such a, a care for the game that I'm going to take it super seriously. Um, but no, I don't think I have to approach the game that way anymore. I think that that, you know, that worked for me last year until it didn't. And then that ran out, you know, the, the fire that burns brightest can, can burn out quickly. So I think keeping myself steady is really important. That's what this match was all about. I was playing, frankly, a really strong con like competitor, you know, like people might have written her off this or that. But she's a playing match, but she's great, as she showed today. She hits that five and I suddenly I have to hit my five to win or we're going to sudden death. So it's one of those things where this match, as well as I played, was still pretty much down to the wire. And I got to give a ton of credit to Shannon for preparing her the way that she did. Marisol, play, again, played a really strong game today. I just happened to get questions that that I knew and she didn't get as many that she knew. That's just how the game shakes out sometimes. And, and like real real talk, like where I have to also just bring that further in. I mean, Paul literally hit every single question and Marisol put him to this point. So I can't stress enough how impressed I genuinely was with her performance today. Uh, so, yeah. Are you going to draft her next year? I mean, is she available? I don't know. Who knows? The draft is a long way away. We don't know what's happening. Yeah, it's true. All right, but I do have to ask you this, Paul. I mean, I have been watching, I mean, this game since the beginning, obviously, with myself and Mark and seeing match after match after match. I, I mean, even one of our producers had called me out and I couldn't contain myself at one point. I watched that Kubrick round and I'm like, under my breath said, I said, wow, I, I just don't understand how someone at your age retains that. I mean, I know that you got a young brain and better, and I can't remember you know, <laughs> what my, what my, my last name is half the time, but I mean, with, but the fact, how do you, how do you pull those? Did you just watch these recently? Are you studying for these? Like, what's the process in order for you to be able to pull the, those are deep cuts. You didn't have to go to multiple choice once. Uh, I, I won't share whether I have or haven't been watching this Fair movie. Yes, this movie, why? Um, again, you have to be prepared for all situations. Once you look at the wheel, you got to be prepared for all those categories. And I think coming in, you got to be ready for anything that could be on the wheel. You know, you never know what your opponent's going to throw on there, what could randomly just be on there, what you could end up with. Um, so I think you just got to be prepared for whatever category you get. I felt like today that was something I could, you know, uh, succeed in. Maybe I don't feel like that way next time. Maybe I get this round again and, and it's not as successful. But today I felt like that was the best move for me. And again, it's just being prepared for all situations. That's what it's really all about. Um, and knowing going in what your sort of mindset is going into round two. All right. So I do have to ask this because now we see ourselves here with a big rematch. Mm -hmm. Last year in August in New York, in front of 550 plus screaming people. And as I mentioned before, booing against you when you were going to defend that championship against Jeff Snyder. He has made it very public how much he wants to play you. He has made it very public how he wants his revenge for not winning that match. Um, and, you know, and I think he's playing a different Paul Oyama, both in game and attitude. But uh, how do you how do you feel going against the rematch against uh, Jeff Snyder? I mean, this is just going to be a totally different match. I think that both of us will readily admit neither of us played particularly well on that day. I happened to get a question I knew in sudden death. But I think it's going to be a much uh, higher scoring game, a much more accurate game. And I'm excited to see what this match is going to look like, especially with the two of us sort of coming into our own. You know, we haven't kind of seen Jeff a ton this year, but this is his time to, to kind of make or break. And I know it's going to be a huge match for him. He's a great player. I know he's going to come to play. He'll push me as hard, if not harder, than this match here today. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll prepare just as we, we always prepare. We have to take our opponent seriously, take everything step by step. You can't think in the future who we will, might, la, la, la. Um, it's about the opponent now, and my opponent is Jeff Snyder, and I need to, to take that seriously. And, you know, who, who doesn't matter who won the last match. This new match is a new game. None of that stuff dictates how this match is going to go. So it's a, it's a whole new game. Yeah, and that, when, and when, right and that, you know, well, last question for you there, you know, going off the same thing with Snyder and Roxy, um, where, you know, Shannon's got one big one big dog left in Chance Ellison. Um, Roxy's got two big dogs. She's got both. Snyder and Andrako, who advanced in the second round. This has become chess for you guys, for the managers, taking out one of those players. It's massive, but the same can be said if Snyder and the Rockstars are able to take out Paul. Um, the, you know, this is the Rockstars needed. And as you know, teams or anything, anytime a player or manager's back is against the wall, it's the most dangerous. So I'm assuming that going up against Roxy and, and Snyder, you're going into battle. I mean, of course, uh, Roxy is still vehemently bitter about that L that I gave her in studio. And it seems that every time we've played since, it has kind of been on. So Lord knows she's trying to get that offer, like the Scarlet Letter, she's like, I don't want to take it back. So I I'm very aware that she is coming for our throats. Uh, but that being said, 
the same way we trained for Marisol, the same way that Chandu trained for Smets, the same way that Ace trained for Demolanta, and every single person we've played, this is a situation where no matter who we're up against, we take them as deathly serious as though you're playing Dan Merle at the top of his game, that you're playing Ethan Irwin at the top of his game, that you're playing one of the greats at the top of their game. You're under the assumption that they are not gonna miss. And when that happens, you train for the absolute best and the worst case scenarios, and we'll be ready for him. That's all I gotta and say. Jeff is a great on the level of those guys. He is. He He's is. the most successful teams player we've ever seen. So yep. you cannot take him lightly at all. Yep. All right. Well, I thank you and I congratulate both Winston Marshall and, of course, primetime Paul Oyama, who gets the victory here and sees his record go up to seven and two as he advances in the next round. All right. Uh, and Winston, of course, taunting uh, Shannon. All right. Uh, springing back, Shannon Barney. Hi, Winston. I got to start with Marisol. Marisol, I will say the same thing I said to you in your victory that I do in your defeat. You played this game as if you were playing this game for three seasons. You didn't you didn't get nervous. You didn't. I mean, if you did, you hit it very well. Um, you you played this. You took your JTE rules. I mean, you listened to everything. You really paid attention to it. And you didn't come up with the, the with the result that I'm sure that you wanted here. But you have to feel uh, good going toe to toe with a former champion in Paul Oyama. No, you're completely you're spot on with that. I mean, I. I was excited for this match because um, I expected, you know, former champion and I got a former champion. Oyama was excellent today and I was proud. I will proudly take this loss. You know, he played great. Um, I was, I was, you know, I, I, I didn't answer as many questions right as he did. That's what it came down to. I'm not, I'm not bitter about it. I might beat myself up for things that, that I missed. Um, but that just fuels my fire to come back, to come back stronger. Um, yeah, I, I will, I will gladly, I will gladly take this L today because it was well fought and I gave it everything I had and, and that's that. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. Marisol, you're insane to believe anything other than you're freaking amazing. And if you're anything but proud of yourself after, or if you're not proud of yourself today, anything but being proud of yourself is unacceptable because you made a hell of a game. Hell of a game. I would reinforce uh, that statement from Shannon, Christian. And w Shannon, that's my question is because you look at Marisol, she does play the game like she is already a veteran. So the question here is that now that she's been eliminated from the tournament, do you encourage her as a competitor to watch the rest of the matches in the tournament and study them? Or maybe is it better to just get out of the mental headspace of being immersed in the pressure cooker of the Schmodown and just get away and go do your own personal studying and not worry about what's happening in the rest of this tournament? Marisol is one of the most important members of our faction. So by the way, Winston, if you think you're taking her from me, there's not a shot in hell. Any of you are taking Marisol away from me because I will punch you in the face before I give her up. <laughs> Mark my words. Um, look, she's a warrior. She doesn't want to sit down and sure, she might be a little upset because she lost and losing's no fun. You don't want to lose, but she lost to a former singles champion. This, this tournament was designed for her to lose. So where else do we go from here except for up? Now, She's a team player, like I said, so she's gonna be back in the dirt studying with us, helping the rest of our competitors for their matches because we operate as a whole. We may perform individually, but our corruption team, our faction moves as a whole and her work isn't done until all of our work is done. And the same goes for everyone else on our faction. So she, like I said, she loves this stuff. She eats and breathes and sleeps this stuff. So yeah, I'll give her a day, she'll be fine. Marisol's coming back. I don't think you guys have to worry about that. Well, that was kind of my next question in there, too, because obviously, you know, there is that I guess that that's always the question for me when it comes to the managers. When you have a, a competitor like Marisol, who has kind of come out of nowhere and had a great performance against Bonnie, has a great performance here against Paul Oyama. Um, and because of the draft and because of the system, like, what do you do to make sure that you ensure that you do keep her and other competitors? Because you get three. You got three people that you get to hold going into the draft and then you got to hope she's available by that time so uh you know do you have a plan on how to on how to keep her what do you talk about that type of stuff going into the next one because unfortunately unless look you might very well put her in the team's tournament i don't know but it, it, if i was a betting person i would say that either corruption or somebody else would be going in to the tournament but you never know i would assume that this is the last we see of marisol this season 
but uh, who knows? Like, I'm just curious what those conversations would be like and what you do to make sure you keep her. Christian, do you think I do anything without a plan? No, I don't. Okay, you know me better than that. So I, don't I, ask dumb I, questions. I'm sorry, fair I enough. I have a plan for okay. Marisol, okay? And I want to say one other thing too, Marisol. I know you're going to beat yourself up about sticking with Nora Ephron, um, but we've talked strategy and I know exactly why you wanted to keep it. And you gave up zero steals in that. And we knew that if he got Nora Ephron, he would sail through it like he did. I mean, he's going to sail through just about every single category he gets because that's what Oyama does. He's just a broad range, knowledgeable, excellent player. So do mm -hmm. not beat yourself up about keeping that. You maybe went to multiple choice, but again, you missed one question. The only you could have, we could have been seen, uh, seen a totally no different situation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, there's Shannon Barney and Marisol McKee. And I will also say, I think that Marisol McKee, uh, you have, I do think we have a very, very talented player on our hands here. And I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of people come into this game and not do it the way that you did in your first two matches. But nonetheless, this match belongs to Swag. And I will thank you both. Thank you for a great match here, both Marisol McKee and to Shannon Barney. We will see you guys uh, very soon. Mark, um, Look, and I say it again, I think that Marisol McKee has, she, you know who she reminds me of, and I hate doing this because it always puts pressure on people. It always puts pressure on people when I see it. She reminds me of a young Rachel Cushing. She oh, me of when oh Rachel Cushing, I mean. I'll tell, I know, it's a hard thing, and I'll tell you why she reminds me of Cushing. When Cushing came into this league, she came into the league and she sat down at the table and she was like, okay, I can answer these questions, I can do it, I can do it, my, my knowledge is getting me through this, I can do stuff. And there was a calmness about her that even though she was nervous and she didn't show it and she was and she didn't like the cameras and stuff, there was something about it. I just feel that Marisol McKee has that kind of energy. I think that this is not, this is surely not the last time we're gonna see Marisol McKee. And I think she's got big things ahead of her. However, like I said, Swag, Paul Oyama, that's the story. And I'm asking these questions to um, Shannon about keeping Marisol. Winston Marshall is going to be the most nervous person in the world after Spectacular. This guy is building up superstars left and right. Lon Harris could win this whole thing. Paul Oyama could win this whole thing. Um, you know, but the, the final exam could be team's champions. Uh, Chandru could still be the inner geekdom champion. Andres Cabrera could be the Star Wars champion. And then what does Winston do? Who does he lose? There's so Liz Shannon Miller is also, you know, the, 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 what he's done so far with all of these competitors, he's building up talent and he's building up two more stars for other managers. And that's got to stress them out. I know I'm just, it's just part of the season that you have to deal with. And I just got a text from Winston that said, please make it five. I can't make it five. Winston got to keep it three. All right. So Mark, this was a great match though. Paul Oyama is the, the kid is just fire. He's, he's a superstar. He is a yeah. super. Christian, I really think Winston is right now in the movie of his life. It's probably like two thirds of the way through the good son where you, you still own oh, and you know, you're going to be on the cliff and you know, you're going to be holding on to the two kids and, and you got to drop one of them and you just don't know what to do. And as far as Marisol goes, she does remind me of a lot of players that we've seen come through the Schmodown doors that play very loose and relaxed that some might say the baby carrots played a little too loose, but I look at it as somebody like Sam Levine, who uh, sure can be jovial and have a lot of jocularity before the match. But once he gets down he's very calm he's very relaxed he knows how to think his way through the game that's who marisol reminds me of now at this point but these are just projections and i'm sure she's itching to get back into the ring as soon as possible might not happen with the team tournament it might happen with the team tournament but either way this was a rock and a hard place match and paulo yama whether he wants to be the hard place or the rock he's the one that's moving on today somebody had to win somebody unfortunately had to lose and paulo yama soldiers on in the movie trivia schmodown singles tournament that's right. We have the match. It's Snyder versus Oyama 2 in round two. Rockstars versus Swag. And Swag does it again. What a year for Swag so far. They are just crushing this season. Everyone was talking about the Finstock Exchange. And nobody, nobody had Swag being in the race, especially at this point in it. And look at what they're doing. So, uh, man, one more step for Winston to get a top that uh, manager of the year. He is really pushing for it so far. All right, Mark Ellis, this was a match. We will see you again tomorrow. So for great Mark Ellis, I'm Christian Harloff. See you next time.